Does the launch of the S22 Ultra mean the death of the Note lineup? And is this phone even worth it for $1,200? So the addition of the S Pen, the boxy build, and the price point all help to make this compelling argument that the Note is done. But I actually don't think it's that simple, and we'll talk about that more soon. But first, is the phone even good? The build is great. The camera module definitely has people feel in all types of ways, but I think it looks fine. The curved edges on the display lead to the same durability and accidental touch concerns that we've had with every other Ultra device. But the display is beautiful, 6.8 inches, 1440p AMOLED, high refresh rate, very reminiscent of the Note display. Oh, also, I know that battery life is something that a lot of people have been asking about. So it's a 5,000 milliamp hour fast charging battery which has actually changed my habits with my battery life because it's so good. So normally I charge my phone overnight, but now with this phone, I'm actually just charging it in the morning as I'm getting ready. And then by the time I'm ready to leave, the phone is good to go. The S Pen is obviously like the most Note-like feature. That's kind of the signature of the Note devices. And it's historically been how Samsung has kind of separated their phablet Note lineup from all their other phones and other phones on the market as well. And the S Pen on the Ultra scratches all of the stylus itches. Drawing, writing, remote camera control, and write to text are all available and all work very well. To many, the addition of the S Pen is noteworthy. The camera is another area that has been upgraded this year, and I think some of the upgrades are notable, and then other upgrades are a little disappointing. So starting off with a disappointing upgrade, the portrait mode was supposed to be much better this year. Like it was supposed to have the ability to detect signal strands of hair, and sometimes it works really well, and then other times it just looks like any other portrait mode photo taken on any other phone. I'm not sold that it's doing anything significant here. 8K video, surprisingly great. Very impressed with that. 4K video, also great. They both still struggle with consistent exposure control. Like when you move the frame a little bit, the exposure kind of can jump. And the microphone quality isn't stellar either, but I think that the actual quality of the image is pretty great and the stabilization is definitely better than it has been in the past. Photos are pretty great this year as well. Good color control, good sharpness, two telephoto lenses. So if you're really into zoom, this is the phone for you. Focus fringing is still a thing, like most phones with large sensors, it's something that you deal with. But generally, if I take a photo on this phone, I'm pretty happy with it. And I feel like it's definitely in the top two or three smartphone cameras on the market. As it should be, by the way, for like $1,200, right? Like it's impressive and it's great, but it's not like, I feel like they had to do that in order to compete with the other phones in the same price range. Also this year, Samsung is really pushing this big partnership with Google communication apps. So the phone comes with Duo as like the default video calling app and some Duo exclusives, like the ability with other Samsung users to watch a YouTube video together via screen share. And it comes with RCS built into the text messaging app, which allows you to have like better encryption, red receipts, the ability to send better video and photos. The software experience on the S22 Ultra is definitely really interesting because from a feature perspective, it is now one of the best experiences on on Android it has so many features. But from a design perspective, while it uses Google's Material U, Android police actually found that it uses like harsher colors than Google. So if you really prefer the pastel look, it probably won't be too sold on this. But also I think just aesthetically, it doesn't look exactly like stock Android, which is my preference. But Pixels have been having software issues. OnePlus has kind of moved away from their core values in terms of like the software experience. And so Samsung's really in this perfect spot right now where they can capitalize on that and become like one of the best Android software experiences on the market. And I think that they definitely rose to the occasion. It's pretty consistent. It's pretty reliable, even if it's not aesthetically my favorite. Also worth noting that I'm testing the Snapdragon model and Exynos models in other countries are having other glitches. Like for example, some users have been reporting screen glitching, but Samsung has confirmed that they're going to hopefully fix that bug on that model soon. But I do think that if you're going to be getting an Exynos model, you should definitely do a little bit more research because the experiences can be different. The S22 Ultra also has Samsung DeX again this year, which is I think an actually very underrated feature that people do not give enough credit to Samsung for. It basically lets you use your device on the go as like a workstation. And I think that's pretty dope. And the specs are so high end on this phone that it works really well. And the specs being so high end on this phone also makes it hard to imagine a note coming out like six months from now that tops this phone in a very significant way without cannibalizing on the sales. But the note has so much brand equity. Like Samsung for the last 10 years has been working on making the note a household name. Like I think when people think really high end Android phone, a lot of people think Samsung note. And so to give away that brand equity and kind of get rid of it feels dicey because the ultra doesn't have that same level of like recognition and brand equity, but maybe YouTubers like me talking about it will contribute to people associating the Ultra with the Note. Kind of meta, but maybe. But I also think that the addition of the flip and the fold and Samsung's focus on it really helped clarify what's gonna happen here. And here's why. 10 years ago, when Samsung launched the giant Note devices, they were really only launched for tech enthusiasts. But over time, as more people needed bigger phones and better performance, 
phablets kind of became the mainstream. I think the fold and flip are exactly where the note was 10 years ago. They're weird phones for a very specific group of people until one day you can't tell the difference between them and Samsung's premier level flagship. It seems likely that these phones will become more and more important in the Samsung portfolio. And so to make space, the note and the ultra are kind of becoming one device. So I think that it's very possible that the Note is done in name, but its features and its legacy and the person that it's trying to hit will live on in the Ultra lineup. But I also think that some people are just okay getting the Plus. Like they don't need to spend the extra couple hundred dollars to get an Ultra. And so I just reviewed the Plus. If you're in that market of like, which one should I get? You can check out that video right here. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.